I am Marcus James Dixon with Gold Derby, and we would like to welcome John Powell to our film composers panel for Migration. And John, you've composed so many beloved animated movies over the years, like How to Train Your Dragon and Kung Fu Panda. So what was it about Migration, which, which follows this family of solitary ducks uh, who decide to migrate south, that made you say, quack, yes, let's do it? Well, obviously, I didn't say that, but um, <laughs> I did um respond always to chris melodandry who i've worked with many times in the past and um and also i responded very much to the director benjamin who's just brilliant and uh, I, I loved absolutely loved ernest and celestine and uh, so i got very excited when his name <laughs> was mentioned by chris melodandry it was that simple and also flying things i do like scoring flying things mm. If, there, if it had just been ducks on, on a lake, the whole film, I might have been more assured of myself, but lots of flying, yes. And, and what's the key to a good flying scene? I, and there's this great scene where all of the, the Mallard family, they hit the skies for the first time and it's this beautiful sweeping score, lots of string instruments. I mean, I, I think it's the same as whatever I'm ever scoring in a film is, is I'm always trying to be with the, you know, the, the the actual sort of um in this case the members of all the family and i suppose humans have always wanted to fly and i've always just loved the idea of being able to fly and um i will never be able to do it it's way too dangerous uh, other than in a, a jet plane um so i just try and make the noise that i think i'd feel if i was getting to do it mm. And at the very beginning of the movie, there's this really fun, peppy score over the opening cast credits that includes human voices as well, I believe. It, it really sets the mood as the intro. What can you tell us about that piece? Yeah, I, I don't know quite how stuff happens, really. You get you get into conversations with directors and and you try things out and uh, and before you know it, you are somewhere. And in this particular case, it was just, it, I knew that Benjamin wanted a level of sort of unusual creativity, he wanted fun. Um, he had a sensibility um, for a couple of things, one of which is he a lot of classical music he loves, but he's also French and I can't help sort of take that out of the equation <laughs> whenever I spoke to him. And there's a lot of great fun sort of 60s music where there's a, a lot of vocals, women's vocals used. Uh, and, Especially, I mean, it doesn't sound like this particular piece, but I, I was a big fan of the Swingle Singers as well, which sort of, which was of that era. And even though they weren't French, uh, um, it, it had a, who were they? they? They had a certain sort of um, tone to it that felt like um, the kind of fun I thought Benjamin would like. And mm -hmm. that completely just on instinct. And so I tried it, thought I would either get laughed out of the room or not. And I just, pressed play and he seemed to like it so, and we were away uh, I was really mesmerized by the scene where the ducks see the skyscrapers for the first time in their lives and the score is slightly mysterious and a twinkly a little bit and then it gets action-packed immediately as they fall down to the streets uh, what can you tell us about those moments in the movie well th this was a really significant thing for me when we were sort of spotting the movie was uh, Benjamin was talking about it and we and he was quite insistent, you know, these ducks, they might be, they could easily be in an alien land. Mm. This is as alien to them as, as anywhere could be to us. So that meant that I could, I could treat it as if it was, you know, Mars. And it certainly, I deliberately didn't try to ever sort of emulate what we know of of it of New York, the sound of New York, musically, or, or any of the cities they visit. Um, it was always, you know, basically from the point of view of, you know, just visiting really strange or amazing places. And in, and if you fly into New York that way, <laughs> it's a truly amazing scene, you know, and, and if you're, if you don't know where you're going, you end up on street level, which is what they do, it's, it must be the most frightening thing ever. And there's a garden scene. Uh, I think someone called it a heaven for ducks uh, scene. And and in the background, there was clucking and and quacking actually in the in the score. And I'm wondering, how did you create those instrumentations? <laughs> well, there wasn't, and I didn't think it would work. 
uh, so I didn't write it in. I, so I just had the female voices singing, you know, bum bum bums, as as in with the opening titles. Um, and then I think uh, one of the singers said, "Can we do it as quacks?" <laughs> so I kind of rolled my eyes, and um, and we <laughs> did it. And I didn't know that Benjamin, who was in France at the time, was online. And I, we immediately got this message, which is, that's the funniest, things I've, funny, funniest thing I've ever heard from him. So I thought, great, okay, well, good. So some of these things, I know everyone likes to think we were very organized and, and I, I might know what I'm doing, but a lot of it's just happenstance and just trying stuff out and seeing what makes everyone laugh. Well, I, I absolutely loved it. And so I'm, I'm glad you took the risk because I think it totally paid off. And the villain of the movie, he's this evil human chef who who wants to cook the ducks. And what can you tell us about his themes and music cues? I imagine you wanted him to sound different, have different sounds and, and instruments than our beloved ducks did. Yeah. Um, I mean, the no human speaks in the movie. It's yeah. only only the animals speak. Um, so the humans just grunt. <laughs> <laughs> so Benjamin was always talking about him as as an alien, you know, just a, an animal. You know, he wanted to swap it all. So he he really needed to feel like a a predator, <laughs> um, uh, or, or even worse, as they say in the film, you know, somebody who who serves serves you to to predators who are too lazy to kill you, kill you, and eat, you know, cook you themselves. So the thing about him was also I didn't know at the time is you know he's based on a real chef <laughs> mm. so I'm glad I didn't know that because otherwise I might have it might have influenced me so I just treated it as if you know it was a sort of an action movie and there was a, a very dangerous animal prowling around that's all and this you mentioned uh Benjamin Renner the director and the script is, is from Mike White and yeah. do, you, do you recall what were your early discussions you know right when you when you got the job what kind of things did you all talk about what well, sounds you needed to have and things like that well by the time i come on very often you know all of the script writing and everything has been done and the film is in pretty good shape when i come on pretty near the end considering um so i get to sort of walk into these things late enough that i have a, a pretty objective eye on it and i can basically react to what i see um and then we talk about the differential between what was always hoped for <laughs> in the movie and and what seems to be there when you when you walk in and see it and so that i can i can try and uh, you know sort of elevate it or, or amplify things that are there uh, or or you know lessen some of the things that that maybe you know don't feel uh, as necessary to the storytelling as as other things so i i walk in and i just i take it on face value and then we all talk um and then we I just tried things. I mean, I think it was last Christmas. I, I just spent the Christmas over the Christmas period, just basically messing around. <laughs> um, and then uh, Benjamin came out from France, and we had a couple, of, you know, a couple of days where we just sort of listened through things and played and talked. And then I was off and running. It, it's again, it's it's you know, the, I, Benjamin had a very kind of open view of what what the music could be. Mm -hmm. he, he, we talked about certain things that. He loved, and once I got him to admit that he really liked classical music, we talked about, you know, Peter and the Wolf. And there's mm. a great duck character in Peter and the Wolf with on an oboe. So there's little bits of that. There's all sorts of different things that have come from the, you know, that come from the discussions, and also just come from who knows where. Just whatever makes me laugh at the time, whatever makes him laugh. That's all. And you mentioned the uh, vocalists a little bit. Can you talk about the orchestra as a whole? H how many instruments were there? Were, were there any fun, unusual instruments that people may not have recognized immediately? Um, well, in, in the orchestration, it, it's a pretty big orchestra most of the time. Um, the usual sort of, I don't know, 100 pieces or whatever. Um, and there's there's other things around. One of, one of the things was that I, I have... I don't know how I must have got it years ago, a, a kora, which is a African harp. Mm. And so it's got these very long strings on it that um, you can actually get access to. You can, it'd be kind of hard to do on a normal, uh, on a, a sort of a Western harp, but, and they're all nylon. And I just have a, like a steel, which is you use for steel, pedal steels, guitars. And so I was just started to, 
pluck away at that and move this thing up and down. And I just kind of captured these really strange sounds um, mm. and sampled them and then started to play with them and, and, and with, the, with the orchestra. And, uh, and they seemed to make me laugh for the, for the pigeon that... Um, mm. Aquafina. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know why. That, there's no real connection there other than, again, it's just lots of messing around. There's like a... The great thing we have is we have time and we have a sand pit to play in. <laughs> and then at the end of the day, you, you look and, and see what's working, see what attaches itself. You know, obviously thematically, musically, I'm, I'm sort of trying to keep it very, um, uh, very structured. Mm -hmm. But the actual sort of textures and sounds, I think until, until it really settles down, the, anything's up for grabs in a, in a film like this. And a, kind of a broad question, but what is the biggest difference between composing an animated movie and composing a score for a live action film? Is there any major differences? God, it's it's always been a really interesting question. The problem is because I've done both of them, I I've not until recently perhaps identified what it is I like about animation. And one of the things I think is that there's a level of reality in in live action even though live action still isn't real mm -hmm. you know because it's it's a film there's a camera um the mere fact you have music in a live action film starts to break reality i mean i think this came up when i worked you know on on things with um with paul greengrass who was a, who was a documentary maker and we did you know the bournes and then we did you know 1993 and so the question of what music does in live action became very interesting as to how it, it obviously it's doing all the things we want film music to do it's supporting but it's very presence can reduce the reality the feeling of reality in it because we're actually seeing very real pictures as soon as you get to animation you suspend a lot of that the mere fact that it's animation and that suspension of reality i think gives me a free uh, reign to perhaps, um, I don't know, musically go places where I can in, I can discover the joy, I think in the in the storytelling and in the characters, and often that's hard, that's much harder in 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 live action. It, it mm. depends on the live action, obviously, um, but um, the, the animation has always been that kind of um, feeling of freedom for me. Well, John, thank you so much for chatting with us today, uh, and we will see you at the panel at, at the very end here. So stick around. Pleasure. Okay.